Welcome back to Miss Dewey's reading class. Lesson 18. We are now on part four. Well, this is part B of the class. You should have already done your warm up. Have your warm up answers from part A of lesson 18. And um, now we're going to go into our reading comprehension skills, which is root words and affixes today. So a root word is a word or word part that can form the basis of new words through the addition of prefixes and suffixes. An affix is an additional element placed at the beginning or end of the root stem or word or in the body of the word to modify its meaning. Prefix goes before, suffix goes after. So root words, a root as its name suggests is a word or a word part from which other words grow, usually through the addition of prefixes and suffixes. So here we go. Root, the definition is the basic word, part of a word that carries meaning. So here's the example is struct, which means to build. And a base word, a word that can stand alone and carry its own meaning, structure, something that had been built. Prefix, the beginning of the word that changes the meaning of the base word. Restructure, to change or alter the way something is built. Suffix, the ending of the word that changes the meaning of the base word. Structured, built in the past. Affix, the prefix or suffix that modifies the meaning of the base word. So there's two here. Restructured, to have been changed or altered in the past. So here are some common prefixes, post, so like post-mortem, post-script, post-operative, pre or pro, precede, predict, project, sub, submarine, subsidiary, substandard, sim or sin, symmetry, symposium, synchronize, tele, which is telemedicine, television, Trans, trans, transmits, transaction, tri, tricycle, trimester. Un, unfinished, unskilled, ungraceful. Uni, unicorn, unicellular, unicycle. Omni, omniscient, omnivorous. Um, don't know why I put, anyways, sorry. Up, so upbeat, updo, upgrade. So here are some suffix, it's a little blurry, but able can be done. So preventable, so that something that can be done can be prevented. L-Y, a characteristic of bravely. They have a characteristic of brave, of bravery. Y, characterized by brainy. E-D is a past tense verb. I-O-N, the action or process of, so celebration. That's the action or process of, of celebrating. Meant, the action or result of movement. So that's the result of moving. Ness, the state or quality of fondness. So I, I am a state of being fond of something. Like I have a fondness for chocolate. I'm a state of being fond of chocolate. S is just plural. Okay, so we're going to watch a clip about root words and affixes, and it's Latin, Greek roots, and affixes by Khan Academy. Hello, readers. Today I want to talk about vocabulary and how many English words have Greek or Latin roots embedded in them, and how you can use that to your advantage. The story of why English has Greek and Latin in it at all is super fascinating to me, and if I allowed myself I'd go off on a big old tangent about it, but let's save that for another time. Suffice it to say that English has Latin and Greek chunks in it for fun history reasons, and, and let's just leave it at that for now. I'm not going to say that you need to be able to speak modern Greek or read ancient Latin in order to understand English, but many complicated words are made up of little language building blocks that we can break apart using the power of understanding. That was cool, right? I'm cool. 
I'm going to introduce some vocabulary about vocabulary now, so brace yourselves. There's this idea of a root word. Take the word dent, which is Latin for tooth. From that root word, we can get the adjective dental, which means about teeth, or the noun dentist, which means a person who specializes in teeth, or the noun dentures, which are false teeth. That's what a root is. Now, you can also combine roots to make words. The word foot is Greek for light. The root graph comes from the Greek for writing. You put those together, you get photograph or writing with light. It's kind of poetic, isn't it? To this understanding, let us add the idea of an affix. Affixes aren't words or roots, but they are word particles that convey meaning. Maybe you've heard of prefixes and suffixes. If you have, these are both types of affixes. Prefixes attach at the front end of a word, whereas suffixes attach at the back end. An example of a suffix would be logi, meaning the study of or the science of. So we can make a bunch of words with logi, like biology. That's supposed to be a little amoeba. Cetology, the study or the science of whales. Anthropology, the study of human beings. Cosmology, the study of the universe. So if you see a logi, it's going to be some kind of science or specialized area of study. A good example of a prefix would be the Greek para, which means alongside. So a paralegal is someone who works alongside lawyers. A paramedic works alongside doctors. And if your house is haunted, you don't need a normal pest control expert to get rid of the ghost. You need a paranormal pest control expert, one that is alongside, but not within, normalcy. And thus, you call the Ghostbusters. So what does all of this mean for you as a reader? Well, when I encounter a word I don't understand, it's like I had been walking down a hallway and was suddenly confronted with a locked door. It's frustrating. But the magic, the power of studying roots, prefixes, and suffixes is that when you master a small handful of them, you suddenly become the proud owner of a ring of keys. Doors fling themselves open for you. You can go anywhere, you can understand any concept, any piece of vocabulary. An army of locked doors fall off their hinges all at once when you approach. Don't believe me? I'll show you. While excavating the foundation for a geothermal plant, my companion Neha found a fossil. Upon closer inspection, she realized it was a pterodactyl. Wow, a lot of big words in that little paragraph. Now, watch this. Excavating, so hollowing out. Foundation, bottom making. Geothermal, earth heat. Companion. So this is someone you would eat bread with. So bread together. And who do we eat bread together with? Our friends. Inspection, looking in or closer. And pterodactyl. Pter means wing. Dactyl means finger. It is a prehistoric winged reptile. So, while she was digging in the ground to prepare the bottom of a plant that gets electricity from the heat of the earth, my friend Neha found a fossil. When she looked at it closely, she realized it was a flying reptile with fingery wings. Do you see what I mean about keys? Studying roots and affixes gives me the power to look at those words and crack them apart. You're not so big now, vocabulary word. You have no power over me. Studying roots, prefixes, and suffixes will give you that same power. I promise you it is awesome. Like, literally, it fills me with a sense of awe. The power is yours for the taking. You can learn anything. David out. Okay, are we doing those fun history reasons, though? Okay, the short version is that first the Romans, then some Vikings, then some French Vikings invaded the island of Great Britain a bunch of times over the last 1,500 years, shaping the language and making what I like to call French-shaped dents in the Germanic structure of English. English is a Germanic language, French is a Romance language, meaning not that it is full of love, but that it is an offshoot of Latin, or, you know, Roman. French took root in 11th century English and merged with it, grafting an enormous amount of Greek and Latin vocabulary onto a German rootstock. 
We often reach for Latin and Greek compounds when we compose new words, which is why we say television in English, which comes from the Greek tele, meaning far away, and the Latin virere, meaning to see. If we reached for Germanic roots to make new words, we'd call a television a farseer, because indeed, that's what the word is in German, fernsehen. So, why do we have Greek and Latin in our vocabulary? Because England was colonized by French speakers almost a thousand years ago. Imagine what English will sound like in another thousand years. Anyway, thanks for coming on this tangent with me. David out for real this time. Bye. Okay. So... Below, we're going to do a, sorry, we're going to do a reading comprehension skills uh, thing, and we're going to work on um, using certain prefixes and suffixes. So, I am going to, what you're going to do on these next three slides is that there's going to be a, either a prefix or a suffix that you have to use. I've given you an example of a word, and then you need to come up with two more words that use that prefix or suffix. So, um, the first one is tiv, T-I-V-E, which meaning inclined or tending toward. I use the word sensitive, which is displaying a quick and delicate appreciation of others' feelings. So, I use the word sensitive. So, if you're sensitive, you have, you're inclined to consider other people's feelings. And you're going to be, you're inclined to be delicate, sense, because you're going to sense their feelings. So what I want you to do is write out sensitive, meaning of the word. And then I want you to come up with two other words that have a suffix of T-I-V-E. And then write down what you think the meaning of those words might be. If staff in the room could please pause while everybody gets number one down and then comes up with two more words and their meaning of the word next to it. All right, so hopefully you've got, you wrote down sensitive in the meaning. And you've written down two more words with T-I-V-E as the suffix and the loose meaning of those words. If you need more time, raise your hand and let the staff in the room know. But if not, we're going to move on to the next set of prefixes or suffixes. Okay, so here it is. It's prefix again. And it's inter, which means between. So I already put intercept, which is to obstruct, to prevent someone from continuing to a destination or getting between someone and where they want to go. You're intercepted, something gets in between you, you and your destination. So I want you to come up with two more words that use the prefix inter. Two more words that use and give me the meaning of those two words. The staff in the room could pause the video so everybody can write down intercept in the definition. And there are two different words that use the prefix inter. Welcome back. Hopefully you've had enough time to come up with two more words that have the word inter and the meanings. And you write down the meanings and you wrote down intercept and the meaning that I, uh, the actual meaning and then kind of my explanation of the meaning, getting between someone and where they want to go. We're going to move on to the last one, which is the suffix ins, e n. CE, which means action or condition of. So the word persistence, which is number seven, is a firm continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty. 
So you continue your actions, you continue going, even if it's difficult. So same thing, I want you to come up with two more words that use the E-N-C-E -E suffix, ent. See what you can come up with and create the meaning of that word. Staff in the room, if you can pause so everybody can write down number seven, which is persistence and the definition, the meaning of the word, and everybody can write down two new words with E-N-C-E -E as the suffix. Welcome back. We are going to move ahead and get into our very short reading passages today. So the reading passages today, um, let me break it down for you. This is what's happening. So we have very, three very short reading passages. In passage one, um, you are, so in each passage, you're going to create a word list um, based on the, the prefix or suffix that I asked you to collect. So in passage one, you're going to write down all of the words with the prefix I-N, I-M, I-L, or I-R. And all these prefixes mean not. So that's what you're going to do in the first passage. You're, and it's on the top of the passage in case you forget which prefixes you're looking for and what they mean. But from that list of words, maybe it's three, maybe it's four, maybe it's 10, you're going to pick two words and define them. Two words. And give me the definition for them based on the prefix of I, N, I, M, or I, L, or I, R, meaning not, and what the root word is. Passage two, you're going to write down all the words of the prefix R, E, and the prefix R, E means again. And it's the same thing. You're going to write down how many words start with RE. You're going to write them all down. And then you're going to define two words from that passage. I don't care which ones, but you've got to define two of them. In passage three, you're going to write down all the words with the suffix ION. The suffix ION means act or process. Same thing. Write down all of the words. And then you're going to define two of them from that. So in the end, you'll have at least six defined words. How many words you find in the passage, that's up to you. But you will have to have at least six defined words. What, two from passage one, two from passage two, and two from passage three. All right, let's get into it. So for passage ones, the prefix is I-N, I-M, I-L, and I-R, and they mean not. So Mr. Kane, here's the passage. Mr. Kane found years of being illiterate to be inconvenient, but it felt impossible to ask for help at his age. He thought that many people were impolite when they realized that he could not read effectively and treated him as though he was incapable of, I should say, of completing simple tasks. If Mr. Kane were to ask for help, would people think he was acting irresponsible for not knowing how to read? Mr. Kane gave up the illusion that he would never be a reader and found a tutor. He no longer felt the injustice of not knowing how to read. So in this passage, you need to write down every word that has the prefix I-N, I-M, I-L, and I-R. They all mean not. All of them, that's what they mean. When you have done that, choose two words to define. Doesn't matter which two. Well, sorry, two words with one of those prefixes, not just any words. I don't want you to define help or found or years. I want you to define the ones with the prefix I-N, I-M, I-L, and I-R. So only two. So if staff in the room could please pause the video while everybody writes down their complete word list of how many of all of the words that have those prefixes and they define two of them.
Welcome back. I hope that you have had enough time to write down all of the words that have those prefixes and that you have defined two from your word list. If you need more time, raise your hand and allow staff to know. If not, we're going to move on to passage number two. So passage number two, the prefix is RE, and the RE meaning is again. Miss Murphy, our teacher, wasn't happy with my rewrite of an essay. She had me recopy the first paragraph and requested that I revise the second paragraph. After that, she had me repair several sentences. Finally, after I responded to her request and made many corrections, Miss Murphy made a request for me to reread the essay. I was disappointed in her reaction to my essay as I thought I did a good job writing it the first time. So again, your word list should contain all of the words that have the prefix RE, and RE means again, and then I want you <clears throat> to define two words from that word list that you have created. If staff can please pause the video again and allow everybody to write down their word list with the prefix RE and define two of those words. Welcome back. If you need more time, please raise your hand and allow staff in the room to know. But if not, we are going to move on to our last reading passage. So for passage, I don't know why I put this as passage number two. This is actually passage number three. Forgive me. Um, and the, it's the suffix ION. The suffix ION, which is meaning acts or process. Fire prevention is important protection in any home. Working smoke detectors are one safe solution. Deciding on safe exit locations in the event of a fire is another good plan. If you have a map with the preferred directions to leave your home, that is a great idea to solidify your exit strategy. Also, it might prevent an impulsive reaction to a fire emergency and keep all people on the set pathway to leave a building. If you have questions about how to make your home safer, contact a local fire station and they will provide solutions. So again, your word list, this is passage three. Sorry, I don't know why I put passage two. And it's the suffix ION. So you have to write down all of the words that have the suffix ION. I'll give you a hint. The first one is prevention as the suffix ION, which means acts or process. When you are done with that, define two of those words from your entire list. Staff in the room, please pause the video now so everybody can make their word list and define two of the words. Thank you. Okay, we are going to move on to our homework recap. If you need more time, please raise your hand and allow staff in the room to know that you need more time to complete your list and defining your two words. So our homework recap today is that from part A, you should have done your warm up, which had three answers. There was a prefix and suffix work, questions one through nine, where I gave you the prefix or the suffix and you had to write, you had to come up with two words that used it. I gave you one example in each. So you should definitely have one for each section written down, but then you were to come up with two words and give their definition. And then the last one is prefix and suffix work in three reading passages. Each passage you're to write down all of the words that, re that use that prefix or suffix and pick two from each word list to define. In the end, you should have at least six words from those reading passages that you defined on your own. Please hand your work into the staff. Make sure your name is on top. Make sure I can read your name because otherwise I cannot give you credit for the work you've done. I'll pick up work, completed work by the, actually, it'll be by Monday afternoon, but completed work should be done by June 19th. So do the best you can to get all that work in. Thank you.